boat life doesn't always look like this. Today... Oh, no, nah, John, that does not sound good at all. There are lessons to be learned. On this episode, our boat gets stuck off Magnetic Island in between a reef and a hard place. But let's start from the beginning. Yep, this is us, on board our floating home to Kana. And days like this suck. Holy moly! And in the cabin, it's even worse. We're sloshing around, it's hard to sleep, it's hard to think and socialize. Is it a good book? I don't know, John, I'm just... I'm on page one. You can get short, snappy, sleep deprived. Do right. you recommend it? How many stars would you give it? John, I'm going to punch you in the and This right here, this is the moment we decided to move the boat because we had had enough when we should have seen the signs. Takana should have gone nowhere. Tired of the rolling swell, we got off Takana into our tender in search for a smoother spot to move to. Really, really busy in here, but we're just gonna try and find a shallower spot to anchor up Takana. It's busy here because it's Magnetic Island Race Week. But in the crowded bay, we managed to find this spot using an old fashioned method. We double checked the depth to make sure that we were okay to park here. We do it in the tender just to be sure because to move to Kana is a big deal. Put 20 meters of chain out, we'd sit about here somewhere, which is the same space that these boats have. Mm. Done the measurements, it should be all right. Yeah. The only time we're gonna have a problem is if the wind swings around, which I don't think it will. In this moment, moving was a risk we were willing to take. I mean, the alternative was another night with no sleep, Obviously, we were pretty tired at this point and we were sick of dealing with this. This shot really gives you perspective. Honestly, look at Takana. Yeah. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Watch your head, watch your head. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch out, because the thing will yank as well. Okay, this is what sleep deprivation looks like. So it was on with the engine, up with the anchor, and away to find some solitude. Seriously hard to keep the boat straight. As we approached our position, we asked our neighbour how much chain he had out so we wouldn't foul his anchor. Hey mate, 40. But watching us anchor, we're pretty sure he thought we were crazy. About here. Yeah, as long as we, yeah, we gotta have enough room to swing. We've reversed it at 25. 100 RPM and we are holding really well. John's just putting a snubber down now and he's going to get the tender and go around, make sure everyone's happy. We were in a pretty peculiar spot. The guy behind us looked concerned, so we tendered over to him just to make sure he was okay with us being there. And we also wanted to check our depths again. Oh, I'm happy with prime position. Yeah, but I'm just worried about the depths. I think we're far enough away from everything, but yeah. I just, just want to go speak this bloke anyway. Turns out this is why the guy behind us was concerned. He said there's a reef. And he said if there's a Wesley, we'll hit it. The reef wasn't marked on our chart, but you can see it on Google Earth. He said in a straight line between there and there, which is like not far really. And this is our hull. Takana's draft is 2.2 metres. And with a low tide at midnight, we need to be sure we won't hit the bottom or worse, that reef. So we're measuring the depths around us in the event we swing. One, two, three, four, five and a bit maybe. Let's go over this way. Now that we've measured around Takana, we're pretty confident we'll be okay for now. Tomorrow's gonna be the issue. We're also plotting our anchor position in this anchor app that we have on our phones. It'll alert us if we swing outside a set radius. We're also utilising the sonar fish finder to monitor our depth. Then we came up with what we thought was a genius idea. Stern is swinging around over to the port side. There is a reef over there. We've looked on Google Maps. We came up with a great idea to put a stern anchor out. So it's now pitch black outside. John's about to get into the tender. He's going to launch it off the back. So to make it, we used some spare rope and a spare anchor that we had on board. All right. Yeah. Did you want a walkie talkie? No, I'm good. What if you need to speak to me? Do you have your phone on you? Yeah, I do. Okay. To coordinate our efforts, we called each other on our phones. Yeah, it's so windy. I just don't want to foul there. 
their anchors, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to chuck it over here. So this is the first time we'd ever used a stern anchor in our lives, and we were pretty happy with the result. At this point, we were so exhausted, we had hardly slept the last two nights. So now that that stern was away from the reef, gave us a sense of relief. Yeah, so we were out here before. Um, the wind was blowing us sort of out here, and the reef's over here, so now we have the stern anchor out, we're sort of out this way. So this is our anchor app. I think we paid like $5 for it on the app store, and then this is our Navionics app. We were sort of swinging around and we're a bit worried about hitting the, the shallow area, so we've just put a stern anchor out to hold us out to that side. And after all of that effort, we finally got some rest, not knowing just how nuts the next day was going to be. The stern anchor worked a treat, didn't it? And we slept like babies, didn't hit the reef. I feel like we've come a long way, John. I mean, in the distance, we were reminded just how quickly things can get ugly, just how quickly things can change. One minute, everything is incredible. The next, our worlds can turn upside down. So we have a little bit of a problem. We now can't get the stern anchor out of the bay. Like, it is dark, good and proper. And to make matters worse, this bloke then had a crack at us. He later apologised when he realised just how far away we actually were, but we were feeling the pressure. Oh, no, John, that does not sound good at all. That's not coming out. We realised we needed to get to Kana over the stern anchor. By lifting it directly from above, it would then free easier. So we came up with a plan. Okay, I gotcha. Uh, can you go to the bow and let the chain out? Then? Yep. By paying out the main anchor at the bow, Takana was moving backwards. I've only got like a metre left. Do you want me to put it down? At the end. Meanwhile, at the rear of Takana, John was slowly winching in the stern anchor. Is it right above it, John? Just as we were about to give up, after about an hour or so of mucking around, it was free. Did you get it out? Is it out? How many shopping poles do Get out. Gosh, this is the best. Oh my lordy lord. That is a dirty job. I think it would have been better just to stay out there. It's rough. Don't say that. Our neighbours cheered for us. We <laughs> <laughs> did it. And even that bloke who was a bit stern to us at first, well, he warmed up. And at the end of the day, we were grateful. Those people were so kind and helped us. Um, just with a bit of like mentoring given that was our very very first time that we had ever done something like that before so we're gonna give him a little breakfast treat it's never too early for a beer you got your beer to say thanks <laughs> thanks for your help john thanks john it's huge of blood on there. Yeah, it there? amazing even yeah. when i was right over the top of it i kept winching it and i was like oh do i keep trying or like there's a lot of tension on it yeah. But I just, every time the boat rocked, it must have just pulled it up a bit. And then it went slack and I quickly winched that through the slack out and then rolled up again. And that's a good lesson for yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The good thing about this line, everybody's there to help you. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yep. It's so good. Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, thanks again, John. All right. We'll catch you around the traps, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. So I guess the lesson here is always be kind to your neighbour. Thanks, guys. Because you never know what's around the corner and you never know when you just might need their help. Phew. So now that that saga is over, let's continue our Aussie adventure north. Today, the plan is to sail to Orpheus Island. It's a 40 nautical mile trip that'll take us around six hours. We want to go and see Orpheus and spend a whole day there. Because Orpheus Island is supposed to be really special. There's a really nice clam garden there and I have been wanting to snorkel for ages. I'm happy to go. Are you tired? Today's Friday, isn't it? Uh... We have a big day ahead, so we're fueling up on healthy breakfast bowls. At the moment we have pear, light cheese, frozen berries, dragon fruit, 
and some passion fruit. And now I'm just putting some coconut chia pudding in, some mango yogurt, coconut yogurt, high protein yogurt. Over breakfast, the winds are still pretty consistent. And just after we departed, we heard a call on the radio. Um, someone on the radio just said that there has been a demasted vessel out here near Nelly Bay. So we're just going to go with a head sail this morning. We've had enough excitement for one day. We've just left Magnetic Island and we're already getting more than 20 knots. So let's sail. We have some good and we have some bad news. First up, let's start with the good. Now the coral here at Orpheus Island is pretty spectacular. And another positive, we managed to find a free mooring right on the edge of the reef. So we grabbed it and we can expect another good night's sleep tonight. In terms of the bad news, well, the weather, it's a bit gloomy here at the moment. No, don't say that. going for a snorkel just out the front of the research centre. A little bit overcast today. Rain's finally stopped, so come for a little bit of a squeeze. Apparently it's pretty good. This area is home to 1,100 of the 1,500 species of fish found on the Great Barrier Reef and one third of the world's coral species. But in my opinion, a land-based hike is more thrilling here. I just walked a really big spider web. No, you go first. No, it's massive. You got your gypsy rings on, I don't think they can bite you. To me, it's the soaring cliffs that are truly breathtaking. Is it amazing? The wind soaring up the mountain tops takes your breath away. To me, this is the best of Australia. And there's no other human in sight, just us and nature. The rock's over there. Twenty-four hours of pure joy. There's our beautiful baby, just there in the distance. I really hope that that won't be the last time we visit Orpheus Island. One day is not enough. Coming up next, this place, Hinchinbrook Island, is about to blow your socks off. This, this right here is Jurassic Park territory. Right in front of us, Hinchinbrook Island, and we are on our way to Zoe Falls. So don't miss what's coming right up. And if you want to keep up to date with our travels in real time and all the behind the scenes, join us and support us on Patreon. Until next time. Do mosquitoes live here on Hinchinbrook? Of course they do. You said everything that can hurt you lives on Hinchinbrook. <laughs>